Our genomic health is on a roll. The company is an early leader in personalized medicine, and last year became profitable for the first time since its founding in 2000. Now, Genomic Health is a really cool company. It makes diagnostic tests for breast and colon cancer patients, allowing doctors and patients to make specialized treatment decisions. Uh, the stock's trading at 52 week high, up nearly 50% over the last year. Now, Kim Popovitz is the president and CEO of Genomic Health. Glad to have you here. Um, your company, I think, is one of the most cool companies I've ever heard of, ever. Um, and. How do you explain it in an elevator pitch? Because I think as I read that intro, it doesn't quite explain what you guys do. Well, that's a tough one, and I'll, I'll thank you for saying we're cool, like, like being cool. Um, if, I, if you think about what we're trying to do is answer a question, a very important question for cancer patients, and for early stage breast cancer and colon cancer patients is, is my disease going to be aggressive? Will it recur over a five or 10 year period? And will my cancer respond to chemotherapy? Today, cancer patients are faced with a really tough decision about whether or not to get chemotherapy. A lot of people don't know that only four, three to four in 100 patients actually respond to chemotherapy that get it if they have early stage breast or colon cancer. So our tests are designed to really individualize care, to take a piece of each patient's tumor and do a molecular signature, if you will, give them a fingerprint of their individual tumor so that when they make their treatment decision, it's tailored to them, not to a general population of patients with breast or can colon yeah, cancer. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I'm, I'm not a big biotech guy, but, but the thing, the big takeaway for me when I first looked at your company years ago was that not every drug works for every person and not every treatment works for every person, but for some people, the right drugs and the right treatments work really well. Absolutely, and I think one way to look at it is one size fits all medicine can't be our future. Um, we have the ability today with the technology and the tools, um, the sequencing of the genome, our ability to do sequencing, to really understand disease differently. So the real game changing thing going on now is that we're able to look at the underlying biology of disease with cancer, and we're able to look at two different breast cancers and know that the same treatment's not gonna work for each, each patient with breast cancer. So Kim, in terms of showing the government that these tests are accurate and indeed save money, how do you plan to do that? Well, there's an approach that you use um, with a test that's developed like ours. Um, it's called CLIA, um, and that's where these tests are reviewed and approved, and you go through the appropriate steps to do that. Um, there is some, some move afoot to look at regulation around this type of test. We're calling it an advanced molecular diagnostic. So new pathways may emerge um, that move towards FDA regulation of the space. For right now, it's regulated under HHS or CMS under the CLIA, um, the CLIA pathway. Now, you're also working on prostate and lung cancer tests. Where do you see the biggest opportunity here? We are, and we're very excited about the, uh, the area that we're working in in prostate cancer. Um, we were uh, pleased to announce late last year that some initial work that we did in prostate cancer has revealed some very interesting, um, a, a very interesting look at the underlying biology of prostate cancer. And our goal in prostate cancer, like breast cancer and colon cancer, is to be able to inform men of whether or not their disease is clinically significant. Um, prostate cancer, there's a real dilemma that men face that 90% of men will do just fine without any surgery for prostate cancer. However, about 90% of men go on for pretty aggressive treatment because we can't identify, again, like breast and colon cancer, which 10% have the aggressive cancer, and therefore we overtreat this population with very significant side effects um, for men living with prostate cancer uh, treatment. Kim, let me ask you about pricing. You guys have about 96% of the breast cancer market in the U.S.? We do. So pricing for the U.S. isn't the same as pricing overseas. What are you going to do about pricing your, your offering overseas? Can you lower price? What's competition like? Well, we are excited today to be able to say that we accept samples here in Redwood City, our laboratory just down the road here, from 60 countries now. So we are an international company, which is unique for the laboratory industry. Um, the laboratory industry typically is not international. Um, we were committed from day one to bring our test to patients around the world, having proven its success here in the U.S., and we now have been doing that for the last couple of years. Um, we have a one-world price. Um, what we do um, with uh, partners... And we're sticking with that price. And we are sticking with that price. And we are demonstrating that that price is delivering significant value to the system, which payers in the U.S. are loving and, and uh, payers in the, in, outside of the U.S. are learning um, is going to be very beneficial for them as well. Kim Popovich, really glad you could join us. Thanks. Thank you.